the Kafkas telephone call is within the next 48 hours. And so it's making it's meaning that I need to focus on again things that happened in the relationship, things that went on, where this application is coming from, where it's going, whether things are safe, whether I think it's changed. And it's actually causing something which I'm aware is a re-traumatization of me. Hello and thank you for tuning into this vlog for the Survivor Diaries series. In this episode I will be just giving an overview as I do about what's going on in the background, what's going on for me as a person and also I'm hoping at the end of this blog I want to give some very practical steps that you can take if you are early on in the proceedings and if you are approaching the Kafkas telephone call in a child arrangements application. So again clarifying that I am a solicitor in England and Wales and so if you live outside of England and Wales this may not be the law that applies to you. Clarifying as well, I am going to be quite gender specific. It's the biggest global killer of women and that's why we're doing this. This is why I'm focusing on it as well as the fact that I am a female experiencing this. And so I will be borrowing quite a lot from Pat Craven's model of living with the dominator as well throughout this blog and throughout this series. Within this vlog, I want to explain what's been going on with me first of all. If you are not already aware, I am a practicing family lawyer in England and Wales, and I'm also a mum of a teenage daughter, it's going through GCSEs at the moment, and I'm experiencing a child arrangements application at the same time. Sometimes I feel like I'm spanning two worlds here, and one aside, the very legal professional work that I do, and the family justice system and then in the other side I'm very much aware of the fact that the family justice system can get things wrong and I'm feeling very anxious about that as I'm within these proceedings and that's that's what I can talk about in very general terms without of course talking about my own proceedings or this, the proceedings that I see I am able to give indications of patterns that I see and for example in a previous blog I've talked about patterns I see in the allegation of parental alienation. That's something that I'm experienced, that's something I'm going to be conscious of as my own proceedings approach and the allegation again that the only reason there isn't a relationship between our daughter and her father is because he has not done the things that he needs to do to be able to make that happen. Again there's a sense of mother blaming a feeling that I'm going to be blamed for it, that it's 50-50, what kind of Kafkas officer I'm going to speak to, what judge I have, and as a lawyer I'm not concerned so much with the law and it is having a massive impact on me as a person. I have had a discussion with Paul this morning reminding me that the focus of these vlogs is to be positive and that's something that I was feeling that I was going to find very difficult today because well, there's two reasons really. I am now a couple of weeks from the hearing date. The Kafkas telephone call is within the next 48 hours. And so it's making it's meaning that I need to focus on, again, things that happened in the relationship, things that went on, where this application is coming from, where it's going, whether things are safe, whether I think it's changed. And it's actually causing something which I'm aware is a re-traumatisation of me. I'm, I'm aware in the last couple of days that I've been feeling very much like I did in November and this is obviously a really long-term thing that's going on and I'm not a person to dwell on issues if I can help it. I want to feel well. I am in some senses the perfect patient in that I am accepting all of the advice from the GP, I am accepting the medications, I am currently changing the medications, so that's making me think that maybe, you know, this anxiety could be coming from there. However, the other thing, the it's not really an elephant in the room, is the fact that the proceedings are looming and how I feel about that. I feel very anxious about that. And in a certain sense, having had a diagnosis of complex PTSD in November and coming on from that, I realised that it's not a linear process, this is something I've read only this weekend, and sometimes I will feel anxious again, thinking about that time, and that's what's happening, that's what's going on for me as a mother, not as a family lawyer. And this is what goes on for all parents approaching the family justice system, and it's this absolute terror 
and I'm a legal professional. This is, I, I need people to listen to this perspective. I need people to see that the family justice system can get it right. And I really want to get that message across. And also I want it to do its job properly and I want it to be able to consistently implement good practice in cases of domestic abuse. I've mentioned my anxiety is because the hearing's approaching and because specifically I've got a call with Kafkas coming up very soon. I can sense, I've mentioned with my GP in the long term illness, I can sense that my GP is slightly frustrated because from, probably from his perspective I, he's been sort of like fixing things since November and this is just a, a repeat here where I'm having to go through it all again and therefore I'm having kind of a wobble. Because of the medications I'm on I'm also feeling very clear and okay. Producing the Survivor Diaries series is helping, it's part of my healing and so that's why it's going to help doing this vlog. And there is, there are some things you can do, whether you've made an application or you've received an application where domestic abuse has been a feature in the relationship between the co-parents, there's some things that you can do that could help you to um, feel a bit more calmer about the process. I'm going to go through those things just before I do, just before I do move on to that, if I have affected anybody or if anybody is feeling like that they want more information about post-traumatic stress disorder, I am going to, you can just put NHS PTSD into Google and it will come up, or just NHS in Google and you will find the NHS website there. So complex PTSD, I'm hoping that this can show on the screen, this is from the NHS website and this is showing that complex PTSD can be more severe if there is an ongoing, there's a contact with the person responsible for the trauma and so back to November the contact with the person is the letters to me saying that there is not abuse for which I went to the police, to, the, the aim there was to stop him writing the letters However, he's made the application um, and within the whole process saying that the abuse, the assault in 2002 didn't happen and therefore that's kind of caused a re-trauma in me, that's what's caused me to become ill in November. As a solicitor, one of the things that I love is being able to help people with the, the law and I'm able to work almost predominantly in child arrangements and domestic abuse and I love doing my job, it's probably what keeps me sane and so this is this is why I can get my head around my upcoming CAFCAS call and what I'll do is I'll quickly set out some things that you can do having received the application or made the application you've got the orders back from the court which are listing it for a date and you're going to have a call with CAFCAS so there's a stress here and if it's been a domestic abuse relationship then there is an additional stress. The application will be full of triggers for the person who has been subjected to the abuse. It's a difficult process and the litigant in person is probably just bowled over by whatever statement has been made in the application where you give brief reasons why you want the court to make the orders it does. And there'll be, like I've mentioned in previous vlogs, maybe an allegation of parental alienation or some concerns about the mother, it can be a very damaging process just to receive the application. Remember that the abusive personality is the liar in Pat Craven's Dominator and so the falling into the father, into the gender specific roles, he will be making allegations against the mother, perhaps saying that social services have been involved and these are things that are undermining to her, suggesting that the children are at some kind of risk of harm, even if it's the emotional abuse of not being able to see their dad. And that's, that's really dangerous because the father in that situation is using the presumption of Section 12A of the Children Act and they are using it to persuade, remember the persuader in Pat Craven, to persuade the court that all this kerfuffle and talk of violence and abuse, that's history, we need to put it behind us and that's what you're getting as a person who has experienced domestic abuse, you're getting the lies immediately, it's just something we have to respond to, we have to like say, well that's not true and I don't want to, 
our daughter is going through her GCSEs. I want all of my attention when it's not at work to be on her. That's all I want and I'm not allowed to do that. I have to have this call on Tuesday. I have to have all of this anxiety about it and it's, it's really not helping. The first thing I want you to understand and the first thing that will help people is when you've received an application or when you've prepared an application and you see 1A, don't run away from the problem. I am completely guilty of this, I have been putting it off, uh, responding to the application, the C7, I've kind of done it, I need to finish it and it's because it's an unpleasant thing to do. I don't want to have to do it and it makes me feel bad, it makes me feel anxious upset. I can feel it now while I'm thinking about it. I just don't want to do it. Um, so court anxiety. The second thing I want you to realise, whether you're a legal professional working with somebody experiencing domestic abuse or whether you are the person coming out of the abusive situation, you've got difficulties with the child arrangements, these are the steps that can help you as you approach that first hearing and the call with Kafkas. We've mentioned court anxiety. One thing that I do want to say at this stage is that if you are experiencing anxiety and it's severe, then see your GP. Now, that is advice, as a general piece of advice, that I would be happy to give. If a person thinks that they need help from a doctor, do I think that they have to hide it because they're having child arrangements proceedings and it might be used against them? Well, I really hope it wouldn't, because a person would be approaching a GP to seek help with how they are feeling. This is something that could then assist them in the, the parenting of children and that is something that should be applauded if the person is managing to take those steps to get away and to get out of this situation. But I would say that if you are, if a client has ever said to me I want to go to the GP and I'm bad, that, I, I'm worried that it will come out on the medical records, I would always say go to the GP if you want to go to the GP because that doesn't have to be a negative thing. In, in my thinking, it's not a negative thing at all. As a solicitor, if my client had that in their medical records, that they'd sought help for anxiety coming out of a difficult relationship, I would not be worried about that being in my client's information. So if you are preparing evidence for the Scott schedule, that would be a helpful thing, I would say, to a client who wanted or was worried that putting that, that information in the medical records by seeing a doctor would be somehow detrimental. There's two things, don't run away from the application. Speak to a GP for court anxiety. You should also make contact with a domestic abuse support group, so women's aid or similar in your own local area. They can offer different things. They can potentially go to the court with you. They can talk to you about special measures at the court. You can also seek special measures yourself. It may help you to have a call to the court, you'll find that they're quite friendly and you say that you want special measures, you're feeling anxious and they will discuss a range of things. So they can have separate waiting areas, they can make sure that you leave at different times or through different entrances and they can have screens in the courtroom as well if that would assist. So you can have somebody from Women's Aid come to the court with you, there's special measures that can be put into place and the, D the domestic abuse support could also maybe refer you on to the Freedom Programme for assessments about safety and your living environment. All of these can be extremely useful in generally reducing anxiety as you approach court. There are places where you can get free legal advice or general advice about the situation. Um, there are law clinics quite often set up around universities where you can get free legal advice there. That's always checked over by a senior legal professional. Um, the Citizens Advice Bureau, there's an amazing um, website and helpline, which is the Rights of Women. Um, they just provide legal advice and it is invaluable. I've used that myself, that is, that is absolutely brilliant. Um, I'll try and flash up their number now and I hope that they don't mind that either. So taking legal advice, if you are not able to get legal advice through those sources, you could potentially, there's a lot of solicitors that would offer you a free half hour. Um, I know that that's the policy of the family department with whom I work, so we would be more than happy just to point somebody in the right direction and outline the options that they've got, just as, you know, because it, it would concern both members of our department very much. That's three things that you can do. So not running away, 
um, getting help with the anxiety from different steps, different ways, seeking legal advice if you think that you need it. And then a fourth one, even if we just imagine that we're just doing it for you, not for the course at this stage, but a thing that might help is to write a short position statement. And the key word is short. This is a document for yourself and the challenge is can you concisely set out on one side of A4 everything that's happened, i.e. what the issues are and what you want the court to do. So if there's been domestic abuse, can you outline and bullet point some examples, no evidence yet, and then say what the, you want the court to do, which is to fact find on those things before it decides if contact's safe. Keep position statements short, get them to the court beforehand if at all possible, preferably a few days beforehand. But also before the call with CAFCAS, it may be helpful for you to set this out in this way so that it kind of concentrates your thinking onto what the issues are and what you think that the court needs to do to best help you and any children. That's a fourth thing that you can do. Um, if you are making a, a position um, statement to submit to courts, we're going to have an episode which is going to cover that in a lot more detail very shortly. Uh, fifth thing, um, preparation for CAFCAS. So again, help with anxiety. You need to be connecting with people who are going through similar, connecting through, for example, the Freedom Programme, your domestic abuse support, and have everything prepared before the CAFCAS call and have something where it's got bullet points setting out things that you think that the CAFCAS does need to know. Remember that the call with CAFCAS, although I've said it could be 20, 40 minutes, even a bit longer, they have questions for you, so it's not that you have to fill a space of 20 to 40 minutes and get your message across. Remember that they are asking you questions about the situation. There will be some questions we could generally anticipate, such as why are you making the application, what is your response to the application, and so on and so forth. It will help you to have a list of these things before the call itself. The purpose of the vlogs is to give you some information of what's going on behind the scenes at the Survivor Diaries. So I'm a, an anxious wreck and approaching the CAFCAS call, which I am now feeling slightly better about because I've just reminded myself that I'm going to go and do those things before the CAFCAS call itself. So that's helpful to me and I hope that's also been helpful to you. Just reminding you, if you are affected by any of the issues in this vlog, such as post-traumatic stress disorder, please do find more information on NHS online in England and Wales, and also do consider talking to your GP if you think that that is necessary. I hope that's been useful, and I look forward to seeing you again in a further vlog or episode of The Survivor Diaries. Thank you for watching, and bye.